Welcome everyone to Midday Magazine for this April 18th, 2024. Have your host James J. Mayloff here. Welcoming into the studio our great friend Laura Huber, 4-H educator with UW-Madison Extension, Wood County. Laura, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks again for always letting me come and kind of share the programs that we have coming um, up with your audience. Like this is just, it's really a treat to come and talk with you. I appreciate hearing that. So. We love talking to you guys. And and uh, it's it's interesting, um, in the time that we have been talking, I, I, I've found more more and more people that have 4-H ties. And whenever, like uh, I had Terry in earlier from uh, the United Way, and yeah. we were talking and uh, right away mentioned, oh, you're going to be on with us later. And she just instantly, oh, I love 4-H. Yeah. Oh, I just had such a good time in 4-H and stuff. And I, I didn't realize she was in 4-H. I didn't know any of that. It's it's interesting how many people we know that, uh, you know, in their younger years, get a taste, get a love for 4-H and, and have a love, a, a long, a lifetime love for it. You bet. You know, the first time I ever met Terry <laughs> was when my children were invited to Snyder 4-H to oh. act in a play. So, you know, we just wrapped up Creative Arts Day. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so uh, my kids got to act with That's her cool. kids at That's Creative cool. Arts Day That's... a few years back. <laughs> These are the kind of things that happen when uh, you, you have your kids involved in 4-H. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not just uh, um, learning in, in a exciting selling and growing as human beings, um, but the, the connections they make, the people they meet. I would imagine that that's uh, almost just as uh, important part of 4-H as the people as much as it is the events and the things that you guys do. You know, when we talk about 4-H, so much, there, so much of the time there's an emphasis on the project, mm-hmm. but really and truly it's the social skills that develop because most of our young people are, you know, they're in the same school going uh growing up and through or maybe they're homeschooled and so they're with the the same folks all the Mm. time so then being in a brand new space Mm -hmm. and meeting people that they don't see from day to day and Mm. learning how to um build a friendship learning how to trust learning how to communicate that's like so important Mm -hmm. and that is definitely a skill that we need day to day throughout our entire lifetime and a lot of those skills you guys are going to be focusing on and working on this summer. you got some great programs coming up. Yeah, we do. We have mm-hmm. a summer full of really cool things. In fact, I don't even have the entire calendar built out <laughs> yet. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that the reason that I come and talk about these things is because you don't already have to be a member of 4-H to be able to participate in these events, right? Mm-hmm. We, we really care about the well-being of all of our young people. And so maybe it seems like 4-H might be a little strange, or it might mm. be too big of a scary something to mm-hmm. to jump into. And so we have these events that families can just kind of participate in. They can um, learn about what it is that we do and how it is that we do the things. And the kids can have a great time in, in the middle of it, too. It, it's a so win-win. It I, really is. I really think so. It kicks off with summer camp. And uh, summer camp registration is open right now. I know Mm. it's April. Mm -hmm. Um, Our summer camp is going to be June 10th to the 12th, but there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So registration goes until next week, Friday, Mm -hmm. um, April 26th. But our summer camp is open for all youth who are currently in grades three through seven. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have camp up at the um, Northern Lakes Impact Center Mm -hmm. in Rhinelander. Heard that's beautiful out there. It is mm. amazing. Um, and, you know, every camp has its own offerings, but we're on a lake. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be doing the traditional, you know, swimming and, and canoeing and those sorts of activities. Yeah. But they've also got a climbing tower there. So Ooh. our kids get to do some rock climbing. Those oh, that's yeah. awesome. And, and the one piece that always gets um, some families is, you know, we're not campers, mm. but the cabins that the young people sleep in are modern cabins. Mm. They have heat. They have electricity. They have, you know, regular standard Not indoor plumbing. It, really. right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, it's a really comfortable space. Mm. Um, the young people will share a bedroom like in. So if you look at the cabins up there from the outside, they look like modern houses. Mm -hmm. Um, And then inside, there are smaller cabin units. So Mm -hmm. there might be four people in bunk beds. There might be six people in bunk beds or eight sharing that one space within. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, we are not going out into the middle of bear country with tents and, you know, all of those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, Especially if they haven't camped before, it seems like a really good introduction to a lot of that. 
absolutely is. All of the great outdoor activities, but then a really comfortable space to um, mm-hmm. spend that overnight period in. And, and the showers and all of those things tend to be the pieces that people worry about. Right. I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 being honest with you in the audience, I've never camped. Yeah. I've never been camping. I want to camp. I just haven't been able to. So I don't know the right questions to ask. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but sure. I, but I, I was, uh, I appreciate that. And I, I, I think you're, I, absolutely, I'm sure you're right that that is one of the things that if you did have any hesitancy, that mm-hmm. would be it. That's covered. Got that taken care of. Also got this event uh, covered and taken care of thanks to some great support, some great sponsors that we love mentioning. You bet. So camp, and actually a lot of our programs are really expensive to mm-hmm. put on. And so um, Simplicity Credit Union and Quick Trip are helping us to um, offset the costs. Yeah. So this is a great program of all of our um, summer programs here that we'll be talking about. Summer camp is the most expensive. Mm-hmm. Um And I never, ever want cost and affordability to be a barrier for a young person to go to camp. So um, roughly the cost of going to camp per young person is $150. Mm -hmm. Actual cost to us is somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 per Mm. camper. So we're already, you know, relying on sponsors and support to bring that price down. Mm -hmm. And I have other means from other support Mm. um, that if a family has some financial concerns and they say, you know, I just can't make that happen. Mm -hmm. We have ways to bring those camp costs down even further. And um, one thing that I think is really important to mention here is we respect the dignity Mm -hmm. of all of the folks who are coming to camp. I am not going to ask for your tax records or anything else like that. I know it's hard enough to be able to make a phone call to somebody and say, you know what? Money's a little tight right now. Mm -hmm. How can I send my kid to camp? So um, there's no shame in. I just... I just want to put that out there, right? I want kids to experience camp, and I'm going to do whatever I can to make that happen. This is um, another one of the reasons why I back you guys so strongly, and I support you guys. I mentioned to any parent I can about getting their kids involved in 4-H and everything. I was one of those kids. I came from one of those families, and my mom and dad grew up in a time where you didn't even make the phone call because you yeah. just kind of you, you either thought you knew what the other person was going to say or do, or you were too you too felt bad to, or too ashamed to do make the call and everything and I had really like strong parents I mean Mm -hmm. really above and beyond like going and trying to make those things happen but even they had hesitancy it's really cool to see that we are in a society nowadays this stuff is out in the open we're talking about this more and there is no reason to feel any of those feelings but if you do know that you got somebody that has your back and Laura and that is going to hear you out and there's um, the 4-H the gang of the 4-H they want you to be there they want you to be a part of these things so if they can make it happen they're gonna absolutely that's pretty cool though. that's so, really cool yeah. uh, this event again going on June 10th through the 12th if people would like to register uh, how can they do that Laura yeah so the first thing I'm going to say is like the easiest thing to do to register is to reach out to me <laughs> um, and then I'll send you a link because reading a link over the air is just ridiculous right so yes. <laughs> um, my email address is Laura L-A-U-R-A dot Huber H-U-B as in boy E-R at WISC that's W-I-S-C dot E-D-U. Hmm. And normally I would say, hey, give the office a phone call. But our office is closed today because we've got a training. So, oh, okay. um, But any other day, our phone number is 715-421-8439. Uh, Laura, we uh, here at WFHR, the home of the Wisconsin Rapids Rafters, every pitch, every win they've ever had, we've had right on these airwaves. Love our team. Love our rafters. This area, big supporters of them. And just as much as we love them, the Rafters love this area and love hosting events with nonprofits. And I've got a great one coming up at June 16th. Yeah, so um, I was super excited about this one. One of our volunteers reached out and said, hey, you know, Ken from the Rafters is hosting, or the Rafters in general, right, is hosting an egg day mm. before their game on its Father's Day, mm. um, Sunday, June 16th. And so there's going to be all sorts of really cool things. 4-H is going to be there hosting um, what's called the Progressive Egg Safety zone. Um, And again, sponsors, we have TC Energy, who's going to be coming. They're going to be a part of our program, um, teaching about underground utility safety. Man, is this really for kids? Yes, it's for kids. (laughs) It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Um, But Reister and Schnell will be there with some of the big farm equipment. And um, oh my goodness, I'm I'm missing that, losing the name of the new um, educational space in Plover. Oh, 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 uh, uh, the Farm and uh, Business Bureau. Or or, no, 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 no. I just had it too. And I lost 
lost it. Oh, yeah. I, I know what you're talking it's about. It's the really cool, you know, Central Wisconsin. It's food. It's farming. It's, yeah. So they're going to be there. Um, it's going to be a really cool family-friendly event. So, um just kind of mark that. It could be a really cool way to spend Father's Day with your family. Yeah, June 16th, uh, you know, right in the heart of the rafter season. They're going to be uh, taking on Lakeshore that day, uh, 1 o'clock game. So yep. uh, a great rivalry right there against Lakeshore. It'll be the second of a double header or a back-to-back against them uh, in back-to-back days. That's going to be a good game. And we're excited about rafters. And the only thing that makes us even more excited is having these special days and these uh, f- fun opportunities at the ballpark. Yeah, so this will, all of this kind of hands-on family stuff will be going on before the game starts with that you know uh first pitch at one o'clock yeah be sure to take in a a, a great time at the ballpark everybody it's going to be a lot of fun Central wisconsin agricultural tour another one of those big ones that we have coming up yeah so again with local support you know helping our partners kind of get give the information out that they would like so we had funds left over from when wood county hosted farm technology days Mm -hmm. a few years back and we've got great support from the wood county farm bureau so what we're going to be doing is uh, marathon and wood counties together are going to be hopping on a bus and we're going to be seeing some of the more um, unusual parts of agricultural around here and If you're involved in it, I'm sure it's not unusual. But um, I'm going to tell you, I've never been out in the ginseng fields. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the places that we're going um, going to. We're going to be going to Lonely Oak Farms by um, Millidor to learn Mm -hmm. about. They do a couple of really cool things, right? They have the Community Supported Agriculture, the CSA. Mm -hmm. They also do brunch on the farm. So we're going to be able to learn about some of that because... Central Wisconsin agriculture is really varied. Mm -hmm. I think most people think about cranberries and dairy, but we want our kids to get um, a bigger picture. Like Mm -hmm. what else is out there? And all of it isn't production either. So we'll be able to get some behind the scenes pieces there. One of the things that uh, has come up in uh, the time I've been doing this show is uh, working with Family Natural Foods, and they really turned me on to how big ginseng is in this state. We're one of the bigger exporters in the country uh, when it comes to ginseng. And the way that uh, the way I know Wisconsinites take pride in being from Wisconsin, it's another one of these added bonuses of being a part of 4-H, where there's so many great reasons to do it. And oh, that uh, one more of the icing on the cake there is finding other reasons to be proud of where you're from. and, and, and taking pride in your area and everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that tour is a great way of doing that without trying to do it, if you know what I mean. Like, a, not yeah. necessarily telling kids, hey, this is what we're doing, but in the process, subconsciously, if not uh, right in the frontal of their brain, taking that in. You bet. You know, and one of the things that I love about kids is they're they tend to be really good about asking questions. So, yeah. like, how many times have I been driving down the road and seen this this weird thing and wondered what it was. And I remember the first time asking, like, what are the, like, of the shade structures for the ginseng? Like, what mm-hmm. is that all about? Yeah. Um, and so I really love to be able to listen to young people's questions and figure out ways for them to get the answers without just kind of trying to open up the brain and insert information, yeah. right? To give that experiential learning like let's get them out there into the middle of these places it, it's it gives a visual component to it it's like mm-hmm. putting a face to the name that yeah. kind of thing it just registers differently that's that's really yep. smart it's very cool um, and registration isn't open um, for that quite yet that's probably going to open the first week of may so this would be a great time to just mention how to get more information about the programs mm-hmm. that we're doing all of the time and um, wood county 4-h has both an instagram page and a Facebook page. Um, So that's an easy way for anybody to kind of follow and see what we're doing. Um, Or you could call the office and we could add you to Mm -hmm. our monthly newsletter Mm -hmm. um, and all sorts of things like that. So you can look for us on those two social media platforms at Wood County 4-H. Uh, Facebook, we have an added comma WI. Mm. So yeah. Uh, We'll keep an eye on that and we'll let the audience know once that registration opens and we uh, take a look at that, we see. Have another outdoor adventure uh, I have an outdoor adventure camp coming up in July as well. So following COVID, we had a lot of parents who were really hesitant to send their kids to overnight Mm -hmm. summer camp. Mm. So summer camp was so important to me as a Girl Scout growing up. So I, um, well, we we created this thing last summer called Outdoor Adventure Camp. Mm -hmm. So it's a day camp where we get to do so many of those traditional camp activities. So this will be held at um, Dexter County Park. 
We're renting canoes. Um, they bring extra fire rings around for us. So some of the activities we'll be doing will be canoeing out on the lake. We'll be um, learning how to build campfires. Mm-hmm. We'll be learning how to cook over those open campfires. This New this year, we're going to be doing some woodworking for wildlife pieces. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Right now, I'm thinking it might be nest platforms for robins, but yeah, we'll see. Mm. That would be an easy one for everybody to be able to take home. Um, I think we're going to have the archery component. So like all sorts of camp activities Mm. plugged in to one day locally, right? There's no two and a half hour drive. Um, This one we have open for fourth graders and up, um, again, because we're doing that fire building piece Mm -hmm. and that cooking over an open campfire piece. We just want to make sure that everybody's ready for that. So, um, but we did it last year in August. It was oodles of fun. We've changed it this year to July to try and get before all of the football camps and those sorts of things open up. So it's just a, and and really everything about this one that you've touched on also brings up the the fact of how much the 4-H is listening to the community Mm -hmm. and working with the community. I always appreciate hearing those things from nonprofits and especially an organization as important as yours. It's really cool to hear that you adapt and work with uh, the community like that. Whitewater rafting adventure. Laura, I don't know if you know this about me. This is on my bucket list. This is one of those things I'm dying to do. Uh, I can't wait to... Oh, wait. Grade 7 plus. All right. Never mind. Well, well, let's tell them about it, though. (laughs) So, um, sorry, James, we're opposites. So uh, my colleague over in Clark County was like, hey, let's partner and do white water rafting. And I'm like, "Um, I value my life. Thank you very much. I love to paddle. I love to paddle on quiet water. I don't know that I have that adventurous heart to go in the white water stuff. So, but again, this is one of those opportunities where multiple counties are getting together. Mm -hmm. So the young people who are interested are going to be able to meet people with similar interests from other places. They're going to uh, hop on a bus. And I don't have a ton of details on this one because, like I said, I'm like, oh, (laughs) we're going to have older kids go whitewater rafting. I think this is a great day for me to be working with our young kids. Yeah, yeah. it's a good good, good call. Good call. So when we talk in just a bit, um, it's not an error on the radio. We really do have two events going on on July 23rd. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so um, the whitewater rafting, they're going to be going on a bus. They're going to be heading over to Shawano County. I believe on the way back, they're going to be stopping for um, dinner and all of that. And, you know, I've tried to listen. You know, everybody's going to be wearing life jackets. Everybody's going to be wearing helmets. They're going to have a a professional guide in every single boat. Yeah. But it still makes my heart just <laughs> skip a beat. Um, and, and you know what? That's that's a part of it for a lot of rafters out yeah. there is having that ed- energy, that excitement about it. And mm-hmm. um, it, and if you have been interested in this or your kid has been interested in it, what a great opportunity to be able to learn from somebody who's an expert, somebody who's really good at it, be able to keep the kid and you safe. That's a, a fun event. Absolutely. And for our teenaged young people. That risk, that personal challenge is critically important. So, um, you know, some littles might be ready for this kind of stuff, but it's not as critically as important, right? Um, and if you if you take a look at some teens, you know, they seek out risk mm. and they might choose risky behaviors such as, you know, drug usage or, you know, really scary driving mm. and, and they or texting while driving, all of those kinds of things because they're almost seeking a thrill. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to th- kind of think about the age and the stage that our young people are at and finding a gateway for them to have those thrills, to challenge themselves, to feel the risk um, in a safe way and healthy Mm -hmm. environment. You know, it's a lot like taking um, young people to say Great America or something, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can get that um, safe challenge and thrill with the uh, roller coasters and that kind of stuff. It's what the Rock Tower provides for our younger um, youth at summer camp. Mm -hmm. So um, just kind of trying to Give them what they need yeah. and keep them safe all at the same time. Yeah, well done. And it's going to be a really fun event. We're speaking with Laura Huber, 4-H educator with UW-Madison Extension. And uh, Laura, one uh, one more event I really want to hit on, and this, you mentioned, is on the same day, the Cloverbud Exploring ca- Camp. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah, so our Clover Buds and Explorers, those are kindergarten through third grade right now. This is more my speed for July 23rd, <laughs> may yeah, I say. Yeah. Um, so this camp is going to, it's a, a just a day camp. It'll be at River side park in pittsville um and this is a place where you know the grade it's um 
really going to be focused on some of those social skills. Mm. And we're going to be doing some nature exploration in there at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the focus for that one. Um, these camp, this registration isn't open quite yet either. Um, Cloverbud Camp is typically about five dollars per person. Mm -hmm. um, we'll include those important things for our youngsters, like snacks. Mm -hmm. um, but there's typically like an art and craft component. There's an exploration, and there's some sort of a um, games um, challenge piece mm. to it. So we've got a great volunteer based out of Pittsville who's going to be helping us. She cool. is incredible mm. um, in nature type things. So, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, another wonderful event. We uh, got a minute or two left here, <clears throat> and uh, we wanted to touch on a, a couple of other uh, really cool things that are going on. The Downtown Farmers Market is coming up this uh, uh, right around the corner in July. Mm -hmm. We love our Farmers Market around here. I do want to send a shout out to the Moravian Church uh, hosting the Winter Farmers Market like they do and I've heard such great things about that uh, throughout the winter months and everything but we're really excited to get it back outside absolutely and it's a beautiful space right there mm -hmm. along the river so we'll be doing some programs um and it's really just kind of a walk up, mm -hmm. get some hands-on experience, yeah. have fun. So, you know, because those youngers that are coming along with mom and dad to the farmer's market or grandma and grandpa, whoever, um, you know, there's a little something special just for them. They yeah. might not always want to be looking at the vegetables and the flowers. Yes, so. <laughs> very good point. Very good point. <clears throat> Again, the Wisconsin Rapids Farmer's Market opens up uh, July 25th. And the Rude, uh, Rude Goldberg Challenge, are we going to touch on this? Yeah. So oh. we're just there the 25th. I think the downtown oh, yeah, yeah, market no, I'm sorry, opens yeah, earlier opens than up that. Earlier. Yeah. yeah. So Rube Goldberg, if you're not familiar with a, what a Rube Goldberg challenge is, it's a really complicated way to accomplish a super simple task. <laughs> so um, uh, partnering with the Nakusa Library, mm -hmm. we're offering this program. They wanted something for like those middle schoolers, maybe late elementary mm -hmm. to early high school age students. So a Rube Goldberg challenge is taking whatever random materials you have and creating a machine, like I said, super complicated. Super complicated. <laughs> um, I'm not going to reveal what the challenge is going to mm. be, but I'm going to say that some things in the past were like to squirt toothpaste onto a toothbrush or mm. to salt food or something like that. And you have to take random materials and they have to go through a number of steps to be able to accomplish that task. I love this. So oh, awesome. it's it's a fantastic engineering challenge. And mm -hmm. again, responding to community needs. So I went down and I met with Megan at the Nakusa Library. And I said, OK, you told me that this is the age group you want to um, reach. Here are some ideas that I have. Hmm. And as soon as she heard Rube Goldberg, her eyes just lit up because she's had a sixth grader who's going to the Nakusa STEM Academy, oh, who is specifically oh. saying, you know, you're doing all of these really cool programs mm -hmm. for the younger kids in the summer reading program how about something for us That's, so uh, that good. is youth voice wait uh, yes <laughs> uh, good on that per that student good on the lester uh, public library yeah. and you and 4-h for hearing that kid that's awesome and uh, always awesome hanging out with you laura we just never have enough time it just yeah. runs right by uh laura if people want to find out more want to get get in touch with you uh should we send them to the 4-h uh, 4 facebook page is that an easy quick way to do it 4-H Facebook page is probably the easiest, and you can go ahead and message us through there. But on Facebook, it's Wood County 4-H, comma, W-I. Um, or you can always you, you know, Google us. You'll yes. find us. Yep. You uh, I, I tried uh, all the time just to make sure uh, mm -hmm. Wood County 4-H, and it pops right up right away. Uh, appreciate the time, and really appreciate you, the staff, the volunteers, and everything you do for our kids in our community. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much for letting us come. We'll be back with more Midday Magazine tomorrow right here on WS. FHR, locally grown radio.